Well, I wanted to quickly mention a couple programs that we're having at the library because they're related to genealogy. I mentioned once before that we're having Dan Powers next week, Wednesday at 2 p.m. He's going to talk about a fiction, um, a novel he wrote called How Long a Shadow, but it's completely based on his genealogy research and it covers three generations of his family with uh, pseudonyms. So I think it be, would be really fun to talk to him. He sent me all sorts of genealogy paperwork and um, it, it, it's really gonna be fun because I'm sure other people out there have um, been interested in um, the stories that you uncover when you do your research. So this is one way of um, writing a novel based on that. And then another one I'm just arranging, which is going to be really fun is called the lady, the author is called Louise Andres Moore, and she's written a book called Alfred, the Quiet History of a World War II Infantryman. And it's about her father, similar to the um, 140 Thieves of Saipan on Saipan that we had where a local author wrote about his father during World War I, this or two. This is about her father during World War II. And for me, it's especially interesting because my father was uh, also under Patton as her father was. So I've been uh, talking to her a lot about family history <laughs> back and forth. So that'll be in, De in January. So I hope you'll all join that one too, because again, she did a lot of genealogy research to write that book. So today, um, I would like to, I, since we talked about GEDmatch last time, I thought I would, if you're interested, if we have time, I'll show you some things I discovered there. Oh with, yeah. Connected with Facebook pages where they're, um, oh. they have a Facebook project, they have these projects there. And I have not figured out how to do it yet, but I'll show you what it looks like and maybe you can wow, help. Wow, okay. But to start off, we have Eric um, here today and he just happened to uh, contact me here in the library and I mentioned we are having this program um, and he has a question about Swedish research. Eric, do you want to unmute yourself and you're muted right now. So if you, you can ask your question. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So my question was the, um, Swedish genealogy of my family. Um, actually, I have both Swedish and Norwegian background, um, but I've come across some traveling papers that I wanted to get translated. Um, and I was wondering if there was somebody around that could locally um, take a look at it and see what, what that says. Um, I, do, I speak some Swedish, but I don't know how, <laughs> how well I could translate um, some papers. Okay. But can you, um, if you could send them to me by, you know, email, sure. can you scan them or something and send them to me? I can take a look at them. But, and, no, I already have them uh, scanned and um, okay. I've already, I've already had them scanned and um, blown up a little bit. And um, so it makes it a little easier. So it's in larger text than what it was originally. So, um, but it is cursive Swedish. So it is. Well, I, I know. I, that's what I, I mean. I, I am very familiar with Swedish, but you know, not necessarily, I'm not fluent, that's for sure. sure. Well, that's three words more than me, so. <laughs> and, um, I mentioned to Eric, um, there's our Facebook group. So let me quickly share my screen um, because I found one that uh, I joined at one point. So this is a Facebook group that you join and they do, uh, volunteers do translations for you and they have some rules about how you're supposed to post. Okay. But oh, you know, that might be better. <laughs> okay. So that's just another way of, um, I think if you just go into Facebook and you can see that the group is called Genealogy Translation. I know there's sure. another one specifically for German translations, but um, they seem to be really willing to help. I know myself, we, my sister and I have had some current German um, papers translated. And when we first started years ago, you had to pay quite a bit to have them translated. Right. But it's really great how these people on Facebook jump in and help you. And if you can find local people to help like Gretchen. And um, Eric, by the way, Gretchen is really good with Swedish genealogy. So she's a resource for you if you need it in the future. Okay. Yeah, Thank I, you, Laura. Do you want my email address? Yes, please. It's just... Well, Gretchen, why don't you send it to me? And okay. What, what's, your, what's your email address, Laura? 
What do I send it? It's my email at the library. It's L K A Y A C A N. Good, not so fast. L K A Y A C A N at A C A N at yeah. County Library dot O R G. Okay. So that way, I uh, Eric has given me his email, um, so I can send it. Sure. Library dot dot org, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that was um, Eric's question. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything to mention? Well, as long as we're speaking Swedish, <laughs> I mean, about Swedish, this isn't really genealogy, but um, I just connected with a group of people that are having conversational Swedish together, and four of them go to Salt Lake City with me um, every fall for the... Um, uh, Swedish Genealogical Society's uh, workshop out there. So we're getting, we have a chance to practice our Swedish. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and when, so, do you, when do you normally go? I'm sure it's different. Oh, it's, yeah, it's uh, either late October or early November, mostly, usually in October. Not this year, though. Yeah. Has anyone done any more classes? Um, since the last time we met and you told us all about the classes you did. <laughs> nope. Well, we mentioned- Tom, Tom you're muted. Huh. That's what I get from trying to be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I haven't done any more classes. I've just gone through and rewatched or watched the uh, um, recordings of them. The one from, uh, Family Search out in Sacramento, that Sacramento help, you know, was a sponsor on Genealogy Club. They did not, <clears throat> they did not record that one for some oh. reason, and, which is very disappointing. And had I known that, you know, I would have taken better notes, but because all I have is their handouts and, you know, handouts are not necessarily the best <clears throat> for these things because they tend to be very, very, very uh, uh, curt in what they say, you know. Uh, I guess that's the right word. So, so a little disappointed there, but but I've I've survived. <laughs> I don't have anything set up. Yeah, well, I'll be really I'll be really I'm really interested in Laura and your uh, Jed match. What you okay. found on Jed match? Um, jump right into that. Sure. And then it, uh, we were going to talk about blogs too. If anyone wanted to recommend that, we can do that. Um, but I'll jump into this and show you. And as I said, this is a yeah. pretty, pretty complicated thing that I have not figured out yet. But I have I'm poking around with it and um, trying to figure it out. So for those of you, um, let me go back here. For those of you who have um, done Jed Match or DNA, of course. Um, okay. I found this page on the, a couple of pages that interested me. I have some, um, why is this all popping up down here? Um, Colonial Dutch um, history. I once matched with a couple ladies who um, in ancestry.com DNA that had a little tiny bit of DNA matched with me and a lady who um, dated back to the 1600s in New York. So I thought this looks really interesting. So what these people do is they start projects on GEDmatch and then they try to match up with people in the groups. So here's another one. We never, we have um, in that same area, possibly um, we don't know if our Phillips family is, is a Palatine family or not. Um, we think not, but here's another one that's matching um, through GEDmatch with these projects. So let me go to GEDmatch and I logged in my GEDmatch here. So for those of you who have been here, you go down to this area. Has anyone looked at this at all? No. Not ancestors, that one there that you're pointing at. I've not done that. Oh. Whoops, now it's, it's making me re-log in. Um, sorry, I thought I had it all set up. I hope it works. Just now I should forget my password. <laughs> I had it set up, but what can you do? It always turns out like this, right? 
Um, I hope it's going to cooperate. Okay. Oh. Looks like it is. There's a long list of, um, oh, now it's not showing what I, oh, there we go, um, of different projects and on all oh. different, so you can see that. Um, so the one I just mentioned, the Colonial um, New York Dutch or the Colonial Dutch. Um, let's see where that is. Of course, there it is. And I thought I had joined it, but I get, I know I haven't fully done that with all of these. So here, here is what this is. And then you can see they connected here with the Facebook page. Let me make this a little smaller, see if that helps. Nope. Um, so over here is their Facebook group. Oh, <laughs> I'm not very smooth today. So what, as I said, what they seem to do in these places, and I haven't figured it out yet, is you you um, bring in your, um, that's the same page here again that I showed you earlier. You seem to, you bring in your, um, your match um, number, you, everybody gets sort of a number, and then they um, have ways of you, you can see how these people are doing this sort of thing, um, trying to match up wow. with other people in the group. From these areas, um, and so this would these would not be big matches. These would, you know, if you go way back, but um, they seem to have them. You see how they have all these people, and you try to match each other. I have not figured out how to do this yet. I'll admit, but if anyone yeah. else wants to take it on, and yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't figured that out uh, either. There's, I I tried to join the Yorkshire one also <clears throat> because I have Yorkshire heritage. And um, there's some family groups here and all sorts of things. So I'd say it's pretty interesting. I'm kind of anxious to figure out how more about it. So has anyone um, done much with um, any of this? Or is it? Nothing. Kind of it's all new to me. Me too. I went, I went through, let's see, which one did I go through? It was over a year ago. I guess it would be one to many, I guess. Yeah, and then they have these, um, it's, I find it fascinating, but very confusing. Yeah. Because they and have- I got, it was actually, it's my wife that, you know, that she has the, the grandfather that we don't know, you know, where he came from, you know, and he didn't even, he didn't even know what his story was. And uh, um, so we did that and I did find one match that was, you know, uh, fourth cousin or better, I mm -hmm. think it was, but that's about as far as I went. <laughs> I yeah. didn't, I didn't contact the person because all I had was the number yeah. and I, and I really didn't understand the whole thing. So I didn't want to bother him with, you know, um, without knowing more about what I was doing. And I just haven't gotten back to it. Somewhere up here, I had a um, blog since we were going to talk about blogs. I did find a blog that um, I thought I saved it, but now of course I'm not finding anything that I did. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. By the way, since we're talk talking about blogs, or mentioned it, I went to Cindy's list, okay, mm -hmm. and I did two two checks for blogs. One was on what is the best genealogy blogs, uh -huh. and it gave me a list of uh, oh gosh, maybe a hundred or more of blogs. And then I also did um, one on DNA, and it gave me a whole list of those too blogs, and, and uh, which was, you know, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I'm always amazed by by what Cindy's list has, because she yeah. how she does that. I don't know that she must work. She must not sleep. Yeah, Tom. I don't know if everybody knows what Cindy's list is. Do you all? The rest of you know? Yes. It's yeah, I mean Cindy's list is just oh, yeah. unreal. I mean she she I don't know how she does it. She must spend all night, you know, she doesn't <laughs> sleep. <laughs> she may have a team, most likely. Well, I don't know. Well she, I went uh she gave a she was a keynote or keynote but the uh main speaker at a uh, Wisconsin Genealogical Society conference, two day conference, so maybe five years ago. And uh, she gave a talk, you know, she gave the talks and um, the primary talks. And so 
at that time anyway, she, she pretty much was doing it all on her own. Wow. But, uh, that was before she had a sponsor. She was doing it all on her own. And now she has a sponsor of some kind. Or since then, she's gotten sponsors. So she probably has become more corporate. <laughs> One yeah. of the problems that she had was that it, uh, fixing broken links, that was yes. one of the problems yeah. that she yeah. was having, she, was, I think, because she, she was that, all one person. Yeah, and you also have to, uh, at least then, you had to kind of get the feel for her thinking as far as how, well, as far as how she would categorize the stuff. Um, <clears throat> You know, and, and tear us or tear things down to what you want. Um, uh, so that was good. Her her algorithms weren't anything like Google. <laughs> so, but the there way, it is. Yeah, there's Cindy's list. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Three hundred thirty-two links. A thousand links. Three hundred thirty-two thousand links. And to keep two hundred twenty-five categories. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It is amazing. There you got you got uh, GEDCOM and uh, Roots, well, Roots Web CM, yeah. And this, um, well, it says it goes back to 1996, but um, I think it's one of the oldest genealogy yeah. sites. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, oh, it's I very did... good. It's it's uh, a lot of information there. Yeah. I did find um, this is the blog I was going to mention that um, does explain some of the GEDmatch things that are so confusing. Mm -hmm. And it's a little older, but um, you can see they do explain yeah. how that works. Or I've looked everywhere, and this explains it better than any of the others I've um, found. Yeah, there's, there's another blog which is written by that uh, Blaine Bettinger, Bottinger. Yeah who's the guru of uh, genetic genealogy. He's got one too called the genetic genealogist. And, um, but there again, you know. <laughs> and he um, has a Facebook page too that I follow. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And he's pretty active there. So if you ever have questions, um, you can um, ask him right there. Yeah. Actually, it's, um, sorry, go on, Tom. I was just going to say what Blaine writes about his, he says that a genetic genealogist examines the intersection of traditional genealogical techniques in modern genetic research. The blog also explores the latest news and developments in the related field of personal genomics. Is that right? Genomics? G E N O M I C S? I guess that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> you better have your thinking caps on when you read that, I think. <laughs> I need one of those then. I'll ask for one of those for Christmas. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I need one too. <clears throat> he, did, he was one of the early ones to really get into, um, I think he was adopted, wasn't he? Or some such well, thing. That I don't know. I Somehow don't know. I hadn't he heard that. But um, I believe his book is on our downloadable app, a Hoopla, through the library. Yeah. Um, yeah. His original book that's got him started. Yeah. So if you're interested yeah. in that. He's, he's, really, he's really pushing the, his latest thing is the shared um, CM project, which is a shared um, Central Morgan's project. And what, what does that involve? I wish I knew. <laughs> 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 now, Central Morgan's is the, is the way you tell whether or not you're related to somebody. The more Central Morgan's you have tells you the hierarchy of where you fit. Okay. <laughs> okay. You tap my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do how many and how long they are. Right. Right. Oh, here's Steve. No, that's right. Yeah. They are, they are a measurement of length and the longer and more often. And then CC Moore. Do you remember CC Moore? I Anybody see. remember CC Moore? She's got a blog too called the Gen Your Genetic Genealogist. Did we look some of she this up? You want to look? Yeah, I just, I went, just went to you know Cindy's list and looked it up. And then, uh, if you want to know all the legal ramifications of genealogy, there's a woman by the name of Judy Russell, who's the a lawyer, and her she is really into the uh, 
legalities of genealogy and DNA and all that. And if you, you always read, if you have a question related to that, you you know, she's the one you talk to. She, um, she's got, you know, copyrights cases, court cases, DNA, ethics, legals, you know, methodology, prime, all kinds of stuff. And Let me and, see if uh, I can find some of these. Is she the legal genealogist? Is that the yeah, one you're- Yeah, she's the legal genealogist, yes. Judy yeah. Russell. She's a very good speaker, as you would imagine. I've also attended one of her conferences too. And um, CC Moore, I, I didn't know it at the time, but CC Moore lived real close to where I lived in San Diego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that other blog you mentioned? CC? Uh, which one? The the, CC Moore? Yeah, CC Moore. She was the one, she was the lady, the genetic detective that was on TV here back in May, where and she was one of the first ones that helped the police to, um, well, help the company that helped the police to find a, a criminal in an old case. Yeah, CC Moore, yeah, the genetic genealogist, yeah. And then, um, up ahead of time, I guess. Then there's also, and back to genealogy, there's the Genealogy Gems broadcast with our podcast, which is by Lisa Louise Cook, who is a she does all kinds of these things. She's uh, constantly on the TV or on the radio and and podcasts. She's got two big things um, that and also Elevensies with Lisa. It's a weekly genealogy show. She'll bring in. She'll, yeah, there's CC more, and she'll bring in. Um, I should make a list of these that we can share later. Sure, sure, I'll be glad to. What's her name? Yep, I'll send you the list. Okay, we'll do it that way. We should have done it ahead yeah. of time, I guess, but um. But yeah. Yeah. Anyone else have any blogs that you follow? We all know about um. What's his name? Eastman. We've mentioned. Oh yeah, yeah, Dick, yeah, Dick Eastman. Dick Eastman, right. There's also a Lisa Anzio. She does, um, although she's slow, she slowed down here lately, so I don't know. Maybe she's burned out or something. Seems like Dick Eastman is kind of getting away from in-depth genealogy and more peripheral type things lately. I don't know if you've noticed that, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not so sure about his way he's changed it. He was putting out, you know, his blog one, or his newsletter once a week. And and he'd have a plus, couple of plus, what he called plus articles so he right. could charge more. And then the free set of maybe, I don't know, anywhere from five to 10 free articles. Well, now he puts out that, but he also puts out a daily newsletter which is supposedly hot things, okay? Some of it looks and, regurgitated. Yeah, and so then he regurgitates them onto the weekly. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I may not, I may not renew my membership with them after. The yeah, I, I know. I, I was a little bit disappointed too. The doing it daily, he tend to get some stuff that really isn't that important, you know. Yeah. Because <clears throat> he's got to put something out every day, you know. So you tend to well five days a week. So you yeah. tend to, you know, put stuff out that you wouldn't necessarily put out. So it gets into more computer stuff than it is really GDI. Well, he, yeah, he does do that. Yes. He At least that's has. my opinion. That's my impression. Yeah, he always has. Sorry I was a little late, but I was out doing a few other things. So there's a life besides genealogy? There is. <laughs> Unfortunately, somebody told me that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you guys are on, but I did uh, participate in a uh, one of the uh, Zoom meetings from uh, Salt Lake City on the uh, immigration stuff for Norway, immigration records. And uh, while it was kind of dry and uh, yawning type stuff as you listen to it, uh, there was a lot of great information that was provided and the Norwegians do it right. And I'm sure Gretchen, you found that with the Swede, Swedish uh, records. 
their churches document everything that took place and they keep the records. It seems like they kept them up to date. And if you need something, if you find one record, it'll give you about six other pieces of information and tell you where to find the details. So it, yeah. it was pretty good showing the uh, history of the immigration from the 16, 1700s uh, on up to probably about 1825. And then after that, where they came, because uh, I had relatives that settled around Madison, and uh, I have found a lot of information on that. My mother had kept a lot of it, but boy, they, this gave me a whole new place to start looking for things and uh, getting more uh, support for the documentation I do have. So, these are really, I've been on a couple of theirs, and I think they've been very, very good. So you you have, they got a whole, whole lot more running, and if you've got uh, any particular uh, nationality you're trying to chase down, I'm sure they'll have something on it in the next couple of months. Uh, it's worth a couple hours. They're excellent. They really are. They're just, I mean, <laughs> the Swedish genealogist there is one of the best. Well, he's actually edits the, the major journal on Swedish genealogy too. They just are excellent. Yeah. And so uh, the, pe the people they have are just so knowledgeable. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you find all that information right on family search somehow yes. or yeah yep. Look at and, their wiki, uh, isn't it find are, it on their wiki possibly that's a, yeah most of it's coming off of their wiki but i think you can get to it through their family search and then they'll from the wiki you can get the list of classes and ship programs that are coming up some of them you have to pay a big dollar for and but a lot of them are free and, mm -hmm. uh, and being was, the cheap guy i am i took the free ones free one yeah and are those records you're going to track down in Norway or here? Uh, probably Norway. But there's ease, There's an easy way, of, uh, and I've got all this information. i got all pages of notes I took. Uh, they just have great, great, great information. And uh, where did, you just go to their parishes. If you know where they were at, you get into the churches. They've got this stuff all, you know, itemized and documented and... Uh, searchable so so eric do you belong to archive digital yes i mean that's a great resource yes right. um archive digital and also the uh swedish one um the um, national Rick, archive Rickavet, the rickovet one from swedish yes i belong to both swedish and norwegian um the two the two um parish websites i guess mm -hmm. So that's where I found a lot of my information, which why I need help translations. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, you get to be able to, you know, you start recognizing all these words. Right, right. There are, there are on, uh, on Family Search through Wiki, they do have, I guess we call it for back, I'll call it a blog for lack of a better thing. You can ask questions of the people there, especially for translations, submit what you have. They will do it for you. Right on the Wiki, you mean? Well, they'll send, I think, yeah, I think some of it, if it's short, they'll put it right on there where you ask the questions. And then weekly, you get a summary of all the inquiries that people had made. And I get the ones for Germany. And uh, most of it's not pertinent to what I want, but you just look through it. And every so often you find something that kind of ring a bell. And so you start digging back into it, but they'll even do some translating for you, their people. So pretty cool. I don't know if you saw that time when you went back and looked at it or not. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't followed up on that. No, I haven't followed up very depth in any depth, but I get something every week now showing all the inquiries. Yeah, well, yeah, I have I'm on the Facebook page for uh, for uh, <clears throat> Family Search, and I am I'm also get the newsletter from Family Search, mm -hmm. which you know outlines a lot of the, a lot of that information. <laughs> That's my What's your grandparents' name? I didn't realize um, that you could get all those newsletters and everything. Oh. Updates yeah. on different. Oh, you can get more than your email box. You know what to do with. Mostly. <laughs> Good thing they're not that you can get them with digitally because you you cut down so many trees printing them all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. yeah. Anyone? Been an eye opener. Been an eye opener. Yeah. Did I get you off your topic there, uh, Laura? What about Gen Match? 
I think I pretty much showed you where to look. I'm, I have not attacked it yet. You have to have your, whatever your code number is and then start yeah. matching with other people in the group. But yeah. I don't know how to do that yet. I have to figure it out. But yeah, if I'm someone same boat. to try it. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Yeah. The thing that's so frustrating to me is um, quite a long time ago when I first did the Ancestry DNA, they had a different way of showing you things. They keep changing all the time, as <laughs> everyone knows. And I saw this very clear match of three, the three of us had the same ancestor in our family trees. And the three of us, um, the three kids from this one lady and a couple, and um, we all matched on DNA. And I cannot find those people anymore. <laughs> hmm. Change the way you can approach it. So I just can't find that. But luckily, well, there's, there's two things, Laura, that I have discovered in, in the same, I've had the same issues. In fact, I just got one the other day and I went to it. And the person had gotten their DNA done, but never set a tree up, number one. Yeah. So what Ancestry did was made a tree of one person, which was absolutely worthless. Yeah. And you're welcome to contact them if you give them a couple hundred bucks for the, the subscription. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, and I would recommend that people <clears throat> might want to do, is download your raw DNA that you uh, had done through Ancestry so you can in the future, if you so desire, take it to 23andMe or one of the other uh, DNA matching places, and you might have more luck, you might have less luck, I don't know. But uh, it seems it's all revolving around the subscriptions with Ancestry. And uh, I'll get a list of 10 people they found, you know, from first cousins to 10th cousins. And when I try to find any of them, it's always pops up subscribe, 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 or you don't get the information. So you kind of get frustrated that you spent the money for the yeah. DNA and you can't get the information. So I well, think that's what you're running into. These two ladies, I know one of them passed away, but luckily I got a screenshot of the matching. Okay. It's how they present it. And the fact that they were trying to um, make it more, I guess they tried to change it so that you only have better matches or some such thing now. But um I do have a screenshot, so I know who, you know, at least their code names on Ancestry. Okay. Yeah. So I would and, recommend if you find something really cool, take a screenshot of it because it may right. not be there in the future. But if they don't have a tree, then it's pretty hard to, to yeah. gather any additional information. So yeah. um, no, that's what was so great about these two ladies had very complete trees. Oh, they did. Yeah. And we matched with very little DNA, but way back to the 1600s hmm. with our trees. Cool. So that's why it was really neat, but they're, you know, they're, those matches aren't there any longer. Huh. Look, I'm hmm. just saying, make sure you take it, get all then down when you see it, because it may change. Yeah. So these companies are always changing what they do. And by the way, um, you, I, I have taken my ancestry DNA and you can put it on my heritage and you can put it on GEDmatch and um, FT DNA, but you can't put, Ancestry or anything into um, 23andMe, or right. you can no. upload anything into Ancestry from another company. No. Those well, are the I thought if you got the raw data, you could. No, no not on, like 100 no. pages of it's 100 pages of garbage that comes out, and if you send that in digitally, I thought that would take it 23andMe. Doesn't work. No, those two will not let you, <clears throat> and that's oh. Ancestry and 23andMe. But there are charts where you can see where you can put it. I, okay. So as I say, my heritage, I found one of the best ones because they have a lot of European subscribers. So um, it's kind of fun because you'll get a lot of European matches. FTDNA is another one that has pretty many matches, family tree DNA. And that one shows you X matches, which is your mother's line. What one is that? My heritage? My heritage is one where you can import DNA from other companies. Okay. And FT DNA is the other one that's really good. So and for you folks that had your DNA done, do you do you do it through Ancestry and also 23andMe or did you just do it through one? I've only okay. done it through Ancestry. What about everyone else? Yeah, Ancestry. Ancestry. But I yeah. uploaded mine to uh, my heritage and 
I get all kinds of Swedish ones that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. more European. You may do that then. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't realize, fully realize that 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 uh, that's a good point. You know, the fact that the, my heritage has all those European yeah. ancestors, because that's what I'm looking for is European ancestors. You know, duh. Right. <laughs> you have to have a subscription. Uh, there you go. Good. I, I have a subscription to okay. my heritage. You I it? haven't yet, but I'm going you to have one now. I used to, but I don't anymore. And of course, the uh, uh, Monday was you could get it for half price on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, oh well. <laughs> Ancestry's got it on sale until the end of the year right now. Though they for do, my heritage? My uh, heritage. Ancestry, Ancestry, Ancestry has it for $59, I think it is. Oh, yeah, Ancestry does. Yeah, I, I did mine on Ancestry and my yeah. wife several years. Several, yeah. uh, I was, I was just wondering if you did it on like more than one, like the 23 Me or not. I mean, not that it would be necessary, but I just wondered. Yeah, some people do, all of them. Um, there was also the um, FTDNA um, does a lot of elaborate tests, like the Y DNA tests, um, the mitochondrial specific, the Y they mm -hmm. do, but those are very expensive. Um, my brother actually, my uh, sister got a gift of a National Geographic genomic test, and they've closed down recently, but um, they did um, the Y-DNA test for him, which is the father's line, going back to the father's line um, to the ancient DNA, and then they had us transfer to FTDNA. So you can get those through other sites, but not. I don't think Ancestry has those specific DNA tests at all, do they? Hmm. But That's those don't match as so much as for ancient DNA tracing. Right. right? Which is fun to, if you're really interested. <laughs> but as far as my heritage, you can upload for free. Yes. Okay. Now, when I did it quite a few years ago, they gave you all these extra tools, but they took those away. Like you could do um, triangulation and that. Um, they took those away. So I still have it grandfathered in, luckily, but um, now you can't have those unless you subscribe, unfortunately. But still, you get all the matches. The trouble if you... Uh, wow. Yeah. The trouble is, if you want to communicate with people, they do let you communicate through DNA, but you can't see all the people's um, websites as well as if you subscribe. So right. just like with industry, it can be frustrating. How much is right. their subscription? You know what their subscription is, Laura? I'm not sure. Um, the reason I haven't subscribed is because they make you subscribe for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And it's not cheap. It's oh, like it's not cheap. No. <laughs> it starts like the lowest one is like six to ten dollars a month or something. But it's actually you have to subscribe for the whole year. So for a little while the library had a subscription, but it just it was for the um searching and it wasn't that i didn't think it was very good so well you can only belong to some or subscribe right. to so many of them or you'll go broke i've got a couple already so I'll yeah i'll be wait until one of them expires and then i'll hook up to the other ones yeah i'm big on free <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, so, i've got two or three also idea. well that's why family search is so nice because it's free right but they it, don't have dna no they don't have dna well no. is FTDNA isn't that um, through Family Search actually? It's no I don't connection. know. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't. I don't know about that one. Um, that's free to upload to. Hmm. So, and as yeah, I there's... say, go on. I was I'm just going to say that you can you can Google. Um, there's many tables or many comparisons out there on Google that. Uh, tells you how what each one does and price wise and everything and and what you can get from each one and like family tree magazine puts one out all the time and and uh, probably other mag other places do too you know where they compare the um, what each each uh, test gives you so it's information's available so. And one reason I would um, say try uploading for free to FTDNA is they give you an X match column 
and it's uh, for women. It's um, well, the that would be the X match is inherited through your mother only. And um, so for women, it would well through the female line. So for women, it comes from both the father's mother and the mother. But for men, it only comes from the mother. So when I compare my um, X matches with my brothers, he has very few. And we know that those are from my mother's line. So it helps you narrow people down, which is kind wow. of fun. Hmm. I haven't seen that on other DNA sites in the same way. Maybe they do now, but um, that's definitely a reason to do FTDNA. Plus, I met someone through FTDNA who is a relative <laughs> and came up here to Door County from Madison. So that was fun. Great. Anyone else have anything else to talk about? Anything problems you've run into lately? Research? I'm still trying to find my own. Oh, does, that, does anybody use Evernote? No. I okay, use well, good. <laughs> I, I tried it once. I. Yeah, well, they just put out a, a new, uh, about a month ago, they put out a new, uh, an update. And uh, it's taken me a month to figure it out. And I still don't <laughs> have it figured out. I mean, it was working so well. You know, you could, you could right. clip, you know, email messages or something off the internet. And you could clip it and you could save it into a, uh, um, you know, into Evernote, and then you could put tags on it, and you, so you could find it at a later time. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work quite so easily now, and I'm really considering this. I mean, it's only like thirty-five bucks a month, a year. Excuse me, a year. So it's not expensive, but I'm thinking seriously of changing everything over to OneNote and getting rid of Evernote because uh, OneNote is free. It's Microsoft, but it's free, and it's tied in the you know, to, uh, uh, what was it, OneDrive? Yeah, OneDrive. And that's free too. And so I'm really thinking about if, it, if I could figure out, one thing I looked at is trying to figure out how I could get all the files, all, you know, files slash notes in my Evernote downloaded into OneNote. So I didn't have to do it all by hand, all thousand of them, whatever I got. And uh, no, <laughs> they don't let you do that. Well, I've Maybe been playing, if I was a computer guru, I could write some code or I've, something. To I've been it, playing around with it. Apple Notes for the uh, same reason you are, Tom. For one, that? I've been using Apple Notes, and they've they've really upped their ante quite a bit to where you can bring in photos and documentation. Really? Oh, I'll have to and look at Apple Notes. If you ever look at your phone when you get something from an email and you want to do something with it, and you click on the yeah. arrow of the box, every single time Notes is in there. So you can always okay. send anything you get to notes. And now how I'm going to organize it all and find things I haven't figured out. You're supposed to be able to yeah. do the tagging and that's that, but I, have, I haven't got that far down thing. the line yet. But uh, <laughs> I use notes for a lot of things. Uh, like in my fly fishing, I used to keep a log of every place I fished, all the fish I caught, what I used, what I did. And then when I want to go back to it, if I'm back at a later time, I've got all that information and it's real easy to retrieve. How it's going to work for genealogy? I haven't got it all figured out in my head yet. So, well, I tell you, it's it's uh, even with Evernote, it's, it's very time consuming. You you know, you you get an article or you see something on the internet, and you copy it or save it, and um, you tag it, you know, and, and whatever you want to tag it. But then you end up all with all these articles, and then. <laughs> you know, how do you, you, you got to remember to go back in and look for them. Otherwise you're wasting your time doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah that's why you so got to learn how to tag and I haven't quite figured out the magic to the well, tag. Well, that's just it. I mean, you end up with tags and tags and, and, and then, well, I have, you know, you, you used to be able to print out a list of all these tags and it would tell you, oh, you know, really? how many, how many notes are connected to the tag. Well, yeah. not anymore. Really? <laughs> you, never, you can't do that in every note. Huh. You know, so, you, you know, you could weed through and get rid of or, you know, but there again, it takes time, you know, yeah, to do that. So what have you saved? You know, you haven't saved anything. Well, the, and the one thing, yeah. I'm struggling with, the, only, the, only, the only reason I'm using it is because when and if I ever, ever can go to a library um, or a, a research center, wherever it is, 
and have to look up something, I can take my iPad and do it through the internet, okay? If I get it on the internet. And that's the reason to do it, because then you don't have to carry the binder, you know, with you. But um, I've, I've got a question on, because I don't use OneNote or Evernote at all. When I find something on the internet that I'm interested in, I save it. Um, I do all my work in OneDrive anyway. Um, so I just save it to a folder on my OneDrive, um, whatever. Uh, I've got folders for family group names, you know, sub yeah, 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 and whatever. Yeah, I just yeah. save it right over there. And I've yeah. got, it. so I never could understand the advantage. It seemed like duplication to me to set up OneNote or Evernote or whatever you want. Why, when I already, you know, have filed it in a place? Um, well, I, I, theoretically, I, the idea I, is that if you put a tag on it, then you just go to that, say one note, and you list the tag, and then the tag brings up all the notes, you know, that you have, all the files that you have in your set of files, you know, that have that word in it. Well, one note works that way. You know, if you, you set up a tag, say you set up, say you want to do it by, I don't know, immigration, let's say. So every file that you have on OneDrive, okay, that has the word immigration in it would come up, okay? So it doesn't have to be in the title, like your case would be, there would be, it have to be in the title or in the file called immigration. But if you wanted to put a file in immigration and also give it a tag of uh, German, uh, what a Palatine, okay? Well, which file do you put it in? Do you put it in Palatine or do you put it in immigration? Well, I just See? copy, I'll just copy one file to another file. Oh, okay. Well, then, you, I mean, yeah, if, I mean, that's, you that's what I mean. I, I just yeah. considered it sort of duplication because I can search all my files by putting a keyword in and everything will come up with that word in it anyway. I, I didn't see the advantage of using OneNote or Evernote um, when I felt I could get everything I wanted just out of my simple file system. File, I, file manager. I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, right. I think what they're trying, what I've read about it, and I, I did some research on it a while back, <clears throat> and, I, and I looked into the Apple one as well, because I'm pretty much an Apple guy. Uh, what they were saying is that, like you're doing, you've got your files, and those are kind of your permanent records mm -hmm. and that you use your Evernote or your notes or one, one note or whatever the case may be while you're researching a particular topic or two and keeping all this extraneous information you find, some of which you may use, some of which may not be germane and you toss it. And then when you're done with it, you can transfer it to another folder. Although Apple has kind of gone the route where they're giving us the ability to have sub folders now in notes, which they never uh -huh. had before, but they use Spotlight, like you were talking about, put in the topic you want to look for, and you can say, just search my notes or search my entire hard drive or search the cloud for me. Mm. And find all the documents I have that have this word or this particular phrase in it. And what right. Apple exactly. has said in some of their meetings that I've listened to is that they want to get to the point where you don't have any folders or files to have to keep track of. Just throw it in a big bundle someplace and search it by topic. Yeah, see, that's what that's what that's where uh, they're headed uh, right now. Yeah, that's what, that's for the young that people, makes, not us old that, people. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense, that, Steve. But yeah, no, right or wrong, I'm just saying that's where they're headed. I don't know if I yeah. like it either, but yeah, that's what right Eastman now, says to do. Like just put all this stuff into one great big file, but tag it. And then you search by tags, you know, or what a keyword, and that's what you do. Rather than the way we do it, where we put put it into a, a file which goes into a another file, a bigger file, which or a binder or something, and then goes into a file cabinet or drawer, and then it goes into a file cabinet. Basically, is what we do because that's the way we were brought up. Yeah, we grew okay. up with file cabinets. Yeah, we grew up with <laughs> file cabinets, so that's you the way we do it. Are you okay. saying I'm you know, dating I'm, myself? I'm you know, and, you know. You're, you're in good company. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all do it that way because that's the way we grew up. Yeah, you know? but we learn. It's hard yeah, to think the other way. Like, Grandkids, they do don't. Differently. Where you just throw it all into a big box and with the keyword, then you can find whatever you want. You know what? I've got Trump enough on. stuff in a physical box. I've got enough stuff in a physical box that I have to sort. So how about boxes to the hundreds? Yeah, yeah. boxes. Yeah, boxes. Yeah. Say with you, Gretchen. Say once you got you could you could put everything, scan yeah. everything, and put it on the internet. Of course, you may be 105 years old by the time you get finished. <laughs> well, I have scanned I, everything that's in my binders. Is scanned almost. Have a big bonfire now. Have a big bonfire now. It's all <laughs> under pictures. I mean, oh I know. yeah, yeah. But but then I have I have a complete structure under my pictures by surname and by you know I have Farwell Historical for example that goes all yeah. the way back to the 1600s. Yeah. So I have individual folders under you know that. Well, so, you know, but I can find things fast and I really can. Yeah, but you know, talking about that, I found it interesting. Um, my photos, say for instance, well they. they uh, well, two topics, but the, I don't like Google Photos because mm -hmm. they do not allow you to create subfolders within the folders. Oh, I wouldn't and, like that. <laughs> and they do not, and they do not alphabetize. Now, somehow or other, and I don't know how it worked out, but when I take a picture with my phone. It goes to my, I'm an Android, so it goes to my Galaxy, but I also have a copy that goes to Google Photos. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. So anyway, I got into the Google Photos on my computer, brought it all up, and I kept arguing with it because I wanted to have subfolders under, say, I don't know, uh, my surname or something like that. And it won't do that, nor does it alphabetize. You bring up your L, you create an album, bring up your album. Well, you can't, it doesn't sort alphabetically. So you got to look through all the stinking albums you got on there to try to find the one you're working with. And um, I don't know. I, I, I just think it's, uh, they're spending too much money doing other things and not, doing anything for that photo platform at all. Mary um, Ellen, do you have do you have like Roots Magic or Family Tree Maker for your no, software? No, what? I do not. Okay, that's where I keep I'm trying to really simplify because my mind isn't that expandable anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to put everything I have into my family tree. I write all the notes in the note areas. Uh -huh. I link all the photos to everybody when I put them in there or when I put a new person in, I link it to all the family members that they need to be a link to. And that's my organization for the most part where I keep but, all my records. And then I still got a to, gallery. I got a gallery of all the photos. Yeah, it goes, doesn't it? You have a, when you have a software program, the photos go into their media file, whoever you got, yeah. but into yes. their media it file. It goes into their gallery, right. media gallery, Whatever. yeah. Yeah, and then you can link it when you're on the program uh, viewing a person or some such. You can link it there, but you your photos still say, you know, stay in the media folder, correct? Right. Do I understand yep. that? And then when you get your when you back it up, they'll they'll back up your media folder and it's a separate file. Right. But what is the advantage? I mean, why could I not hypothetically? Could you not take a photo from your uh, your computer file, say, um, and send it over to the person on your software program? You can. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. You just import yeah, I keep, it. Into, I guess what I keep, I keep, I keep when I'm, I'm, I'm trying to search out a software program. I want a standalone though, but mine is a standalone. Well, sort of. Yeah. Roots Web, Roots, Roots Magic. Yeah. Roots Magic is what I use. Yeah, too. But I'm, I'm searching, trying to decide what I want. I'm kind of leaning towards legacy, but whatever. Neither here nor there. But the point is, I. I, I read all the Facebook groups, all the information about it and so on. 
there's more stinking technology that people are worried about that it drives me absolutely nuts. And I keep thinking, I want this simple. I got it once on my computer. I don't need to duplicate, like in the notes, duplicate it or with the photos, duplicate, do the jobs over and over again. That's what I, I keep trying to avoid. And I frankly, I'm I agree. Wheels. I agree. Well, I understand what you're saying, but you have to understand. I think I kind of look at it as a positive. I guess I look at it from a different direction because that gives me another backup of everything. On well, a that's different, on, a different, on a different cloud platform. And so yeah. I've, right. I've got everything in three or four places in case something happens to one of them. Yeah, but you, right. can, you can do that with your computer. Yeah, but again, I like to keep my genealogy as my genealogy. And ah, okay. That's okay. Why. Okay, yeah. that's just my personal opinion. So. Yeah, makes sense. Anyways here, but, uh, I'm just trying not to duplicate my work all over the stinking place. I know it. And then, de not easy. <laughs> and then decide I want to change a file name. Well, then you screw up all the links. I know. Because <laughs> you changed the file name because you thought of one that was yeah. better. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, yeah, yeah, don't do that. And also, don't change, your, don't change your hierarchy. I ain't put it together either. Because yeah. Because <laughs> they can't find it again. A big well, can of worms. <laughs> I, I know it. I know it. Well, I have to run, in my head with when I downloaded oh. my family tree into Roots Magic, all my pictures disappeared. Oh. I mean, the, fi the file name was there, but not, the, you know, there was a big X where the picture should have been. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, when I have time, I go back and, you know, restore them, <laughs> but that's not my top priority. I oh, so you apps, you but... switched from FTM to Roots Magic? Well, huh? I went from the, it was called the Master Genealogist, which was a very good program, but it was one of these, you know, put together by some people who got must have gotten tired of it or something. Yeah, and and so I had to get a, uh, a, a I had to get a more commercialized one, which you know was going to be supported forever. We think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Roots Magic is supposed to come out with eight, which they yeah, been I promising for, it's been for about two, two years. years coming. At least, yeah. No, they, they, they say, I mean, he says, Bruce says that it's out being tested right now. He's got several hundred people, uh, users testing it. And so well, he's shooting for, shooting for the end of the year. So Yeah, I saw he's that. Probably shooting, it up. He's, he's probably <laughs> shooting for that, for that Roots Magic or for Roots Tech uh conference in was it in middle of january or first february. Part of february, yeah. february or something he's yeah. probably shooting for that okay so. mm. well take and that's going to do everything but walk yeah. on water yeah. <laughs> 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 saving things <laughs> no. Laura, your, your last name is it k-a-y-a-c-a-n is that what you said is yes. that how you, how you spell it okay got it <laughs> yeah Okay. Well, listen, I won't see anybody next week. So, or next time. Yeah, next week. So, Merry Christmas. Same Thank Merry you. Christmas. Same to you. Thank you. I hope they be here. <laughs> With my new windows, I hope. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Nice. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.